So this is the dashboard. This is where we would see our projects. And at the moment, we have got this concrete structure project open. You can see that via the green symbol, green dot. And what we first want to do is go to the Manage Models view. We can do that in many of the workflows, but we're going to concentrate on, first of all, the schedule, the, let's go to the schedule planner workflow. So in man Manage Models, we will see a list of the models on the left-hand side, and then we would see a view of the 3D models on the right-hand side. Uh, as I said, these are basic examples, so it is a substructure with a very simple slab and um, columns and uh, a few pile caps, uh, so piles and pile caps. What we, want, what we first want to do is activate a version of our substructure. Here we have two different models, and in the substructure model we have those two versions that we spoke about in the introduction to this demo. So we're going to activate version one, and one, when we activate version one, what that does is, first of all, will provide us a view of it in the 3D in 3D window, and the second is that it will provide us a full quantity takeoff for all of the elements that we see. So in the 3D window, we can see here this is the foundation structure with the slab on grade, and essentially all of those items now in the activation process have been quantified and are now used in some of our tasks. So what we would like to see before we add any locations is in the schedule how we have got each of the tasks loaded with a quantity and what that really means for our project. So this is the set of tasks that we have. So we have the piles, the formwork for the foundations, rebar, concrete, and stripping. And each one of those tasks, you can see, has a quantity and a duration calculated based on an amount of resource that is on that activity. At the moment, this isn't a location-based schedule. And we would have to make many assumptions about when to start the formwork for the foundations based on a negative lag, potentially, on the dependency between the piling finishing and the foundation starting. We don't want to do that because that's a very broad assumption based on a lot of experience usually, but something that when things change on site, it's going to be really very difficult to change and keep the schedule up to date. So what we're interested in doing is really finding what the quantities by location where we're really going to pile. We're not going to do the, all of the piles over the whole site at the same time. We're actually going to carry out, out in zones. And we're then going to um, form the foundations, rebar to the foundations, and concrete them in these zones as well so that we can have a compression to the overall schedule. At the moment, you can see that it's um, a number of months is the schedule. Uh, but if we go back to the location, uh, go back to the uh, model, and then we would look to the location breakdown manager to then define some locations. And in define locations, we can see, first of all, we get the starting point is a box, a uh, 3D box surrounding the whole of the project. And we know that we want to, first of all, split this project into floors. And then maybe we want to split the floors into different zones. So the way that we do that is by right-clicking on the project and adding a floor split. And then we would just be able to define the floor split and say that this is the foundation. And this part here would be the, the other floors. So we just said that that was maybe the, the first floor. And I know that the elevation for the first floor actually starts at, at zero. So I uh, have the ability to add a, an elevation for the cut plane for that, for that story. And what we're now doing in this building is splitting the project location into two 
vertical locations, two stories in the building. One of the stories is going to go from minus 22 feet to zero, and the other is going to go from zero to the top of the box that you just saw. The way that we can see those, phys those, those 3D locations is by reactivating the model. I mentioned before that you can have as many different view sets as you like, so I'm just going to add the model manager view set and I'm going to reactivate that model very quickly. And then when the model reactivates, we will be able to go back to the define locations view. And underneath the project node, we will then see the two locations that we've just split. So you can see here in the 3D window, We've got one location for the foundations and one location for the first floor or the floors above. I mentioned that we were going to divide the foundation into different zones and we would like to quantify all of those concrete elements by those zones. So the first thing that we would do is select the foundation and view it in the floor plan and actually we want to change the cut to be a certain distance above our uh, elevation so that we can see which elements we're, we're actually drawing the boundaries around. And we're going to add a polyline. And just to mention that as maybe in many other applications that you've used, you can use the snap to nearest point and you can snap to the end or the midpoint. Uh, many of these different functions that you would be used to. Um, and let's start to draw some of these. So I'm going to just split this building into maybe, let's say, four different locations. And one of the other things that maybe might help is leader lines. So if I hover over a point and when I come out, I can then see that this is a yellow line extending to a certain point where I can use that. Um, let's just and I come out of the box and I hit enter and then you can see these four different zones that I've created and when I then reactivate the model as we saw before that will split the elements by those locations that I've just created. And we'll also see those four boxes as the 3D representation where the, the physical space that they are occupying. So when we unroll the project node and we can see under, underneath the foundation, we have four different uh, boxes. And let me just spin the model around slightly. We can see then that this is the first location shown here. And we can isolate that item and see it's actually splitting the elements if they are crossing. So for example, the slab, we're, we're wanting to calculate the volume and um, the formwork for the edge around here and the vo uh, volume used for the rebar um, in just that location. So we're able to use now the quantities by location to generate more accurate schedule data. So let's rename some of these um, we're going to say that this is zone one and uh, this is actually zone three and this is zone two and this is zone four um, and then I can reorder these so just by dragging to the bottom and dragging to the bottom and dragging to the bottom. So we've got zone one through four, and we can see that each one of those is then going to provide us more accurate quantity data. So it's one through four. Once we've then defined those locations, uh, let's go and see the Gantt chart that we had before. We, we had um, in our schedule planner workflow opportunity to open the schedule, and if we view the Gantt chart view, we can see that now when we unroll these tasks, 
that there are four parts underneath because there are four zones that we've just created. So instantly we have zone one through four and instead of having 224 piles with just a duration of 49 days, we've now split it so that we've got the number of piles per location and the duration is based on that accurate, more accurate um, quantity. So we have defined locations. We have seen that we can get more accurate quantity data by location. Let's now use that to optimize the schedule. Uh, unfortunately, in the Gantt chart view, there aren't many ways to view optimization opportunities. So we'll flick to the, the flow line view and start to visualize how we can optimize this schedule. One of the things that we do need to do sometimes is just to tell it which order we want to display these locations in. So let's say that we want to display them like so. And we can see the flow of the tasks from the zones one through four as we would like to. And now we can start to optimize. We know that we can take get two piling rigs on the site. So we drag the line and when we drop it, it says, actually where I dropped it, it said you need three piling rigs to be able to achieve that. I know that I can only get two, so I say okay. And potentially now I, doesn't look too bad, maybe I need two crews on the, on the reinforcement, um, although that doesn't look so great, but maybe in that last location for the formwork, there's a lot of formwork in that last location. I didn't adhere to my rule and make that location a similar size. So I'm going to have to go in and say in, in that location four, I'm, I'm going to have two. And in our location four here, I'm going to have maybe four. So I'm having one group of workers along up to, up to this point, and then I need two in order to have a bit more of a harmonious schedule. We can do a lot more to this. I um, don't want to spend lots of time on optimization, but essentially to provide you the, uh, the view that this is giving us and uh, the opportunity to optimize. Some of these trades are discontinuous because they are, for example, stripping the formwork. We could, if we wanted to, use the algorithms within the software to know that when we would, st when if we could start this task and make sure that he works continuously, but it's a low resource and something that we probably want to strip uh, a lot sooner. So it's up to us, but maybe we should leave it how it was. So this is optimizing the schedule. Now let's, let's take a look at how that adding four locations, four zones, how that affects the, the 4D. So let's leave the schedule and go to the 4D manager. And when we explore the 4D, we will then be able to see those same locations. And if I hit the, the play button, we'll see over time how we start at this end and we move through and work towards the other end. And the different uh, operation, operations on each of those tasks is showing a different trade. The uh, different colors that you see represent a different trade. So you can have a legend that represents that and shows you what colors mean. 